Hello world and welcome back to another episode of Refined Storage where today we're going to be going a little bit more in depth about how you get things in and out of your system. I probably should have mentioned this in the first episode, but we have a thing called the wrench. The wrench is made using quartz enriched iron and a basic processor. And now this doesn't actually remove cables like you would think in other mods. All this does is allow you to rotate your different items inside the mod, as well as remove covers from cables. Now there are two different types of covers. They're made with an iron nugget and any block in the game. And then if you just put any cover in your uh, crafting terrier, you will also get a hole through it. So you can have cables go through walls. Isn't that cool? But now the real meat and potatoes of this episode is how to get things in and out of your system. The first thing you're going to need is the exporter. The exporter is made with a construction core, an improved processor and one cable and you only get one of these per craft. Now when thinking about the exporter, you don't want to think about, you know, importing things into a chest. You're actually exporting items out of your refined storage system into a chest. Some people get confused there. Basically if you want to get things out of your system, use an exporter. If you want to get things into your system, use an importer which we'll cover next. Anyway, we have a basic refined storage system here. This basic refined storage system is the exact same thing that we have in our first episode, that which we did way over there. And so if you haven't seen that episode, I highly recommend you check that out first. So inside of this system, we have got a handful of different items. So we can take things out, we can put things in. That is absolutely amazing. If I take one block out, something we can do here is go to this exporter, which is pointing at our chest. And then inside of here, we have a decent GUI. Now, first off on the top here, we have got our filters. If I place ourselves some polished andesite in here, it will give us a little ghost item of polished andesite. And in our chest, things will just start pumping into it without any rhyme or reason. This will keep going until either the chest is full or you have run out of blocks in your system, which is very simple and very easy. Now, if we want to actually get more in here faster, what we can do is get a uh, more and then place more and then it will obviously just keep going. We've just basically expanded the filters. It's not exactly making it any faster. Something we do want, however, in order to regulate this is actually use an upgrade. This upgrade is going to be the regulator upgrade, would you believe? Now, every upgrade requires one of these upgrade base plates first. This is used an improved processor, a load of quartz enriched iron and some glass. That will give you your upgrade. And then making the regulator upgrade requires some more enriched iron, some redstone and a comparator. Now, the regulator upgrade only works in the exporter. So if you right click in here and we place this in, well, now we can do something with this ghost icon. We can now right click on it and set how much we would like to keep. So what this does is actually tells this exporter to only put this many items in this chest so at the moment it's saying that there's nearly two stacks in here but we have more in the system but because the exporter is saying only have one item in this chest it has stopped now this can only go up to a maximum of 64 so if you want to get more than 64 in here you are going to have to put a second load in there so we have two stacks so then this will stop at two stacks very simple stuff so obviously you can get up to nine times 64 whatever that is and that's how many you can set to stay in a chest if you wanted to have more, then you would have to put another exporter on the side there to get even more filters, of course. But anyway, other things the exporter can do is you can actually use it with the redstone controls. By default, it's on ignore redstone signal. You can also set filters for items as well as fluids because there are no different types between fluids and items in these. Uh, all exporters and all importers, they can do both fluids and items, which is pretty cool. And then you also have exact mode, which I was told in the comments last time on the previous episode, that exact mode is to do with sort of NBT datas and durabilities of different items. So say you wanted to have only items come out of your system when they reached one durability, you could say, or you could turn exact mode off, uh, sorry, exact mode on with a one durability item and it would take all of those and put them in this chest to get or be repaired or dumped or whatever. Now there are other upgrades you can have inside of the exporter but we're not going to cover upgrades until the end of the episode. So next up let's go to the importer, the complete opposite of the exporter. This is made using a de deconstruction core instead of a construction core and it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's going to import items into your system so we have nothing in here. If we take ourselves a stack of polished andesite this is going to slowly take it out and put it into our system. Uh, by default this 
this should be on blacklist which is why it wasn't working but here you go now it's taking things out of its system so if you find out that nothing is coming out just make sure you've got no filters on and it's on blacklist because if it's on whitelist we've clearly whitelisted nothing so nothing's going to be taken out but that takes us on to our other controls we obviously can control this with a redstone signal we can do items and fluids as said you've got the blacklist and whitelist mode and the exact mode yet again now the regulator can't go into this as i say but other things can go in here as well with the upgrades which we'll show later on Following this, we have the interface. The interface is sort of the best of both worlds. This is made using an importer, exporter, a machine casing, redstone, and quartz enriched iron. And now when you do make this, you've got to make sure the exporter or importer are the correct way around. Otherwise, it will not craft. It is very, very fickle. Anyway, the interface is, as I say, the best of both worlds. We have two different systems here. One is going to be for input. One is going to be for output. Now, something to note is that with the interfaces, they do not interact with inventories directly. So you must use either a hopper to pipe things in or out of the system or use an external system in order to pipe them into your system now you can use an exporter or importer using the uh, ordinary re refined storage cables but then there's no point using the interface at all at that point so here we are using mechanism here we have got a ender chest linked up to a load of digital miners over there and these are going to mine up a heck of a load of cobblestone and let's see what happens when i turn them on here we go, as if by magic, we are pumping a heckin' load of items into our system. Now, as you can see, this is very, very slow, and it, but it is actually able to take out items in almost every single square. Uh, so you can actually get up to nine different items to be plumbed through here at the same time. Uh, now that's not nine items per side obviously we've got three different cables going into here and it's just filling up linearly as you can see like this so if you wanted to get more than nine different items into a system at once you would have to use a second interface now because this is directly connected it's automatically going into our storage drive here and slowly building up which makes a lot of sense now this can be controlled with the redstone signal as well and again it has exact mode now that's everything for importing it's only working with the top type of the ui everything below here is your export Porting side. So let's go over to this other side here. Here we've got our exporting system. Now we are using just a dirt chest 9000 to simulate one stack of items. So we want to get this cobblestone out. Let's just get one here. And now what we can do is in our interface, we can set filters. The top part is the filter and the bottom part is actually an internal storage for the block. So if I put down one cobblestone here it's instantly trying to constantly put one cobblestone into its lower point but because i'm hoppering it out this is going to slowly fill up once this reaches 64 this is just going to pretty much stop however it probably will fill the rest of this hopper first now something you can do is take this to 64 and say you want a whole 64 stacks to go in here at a time obviously with a hopper it still only takes one item at a time so it won't exactly fill up but uh there you go this is now going to start filling up the hopper if you want to extract more items, of course, you can do up to nine different filters. And obviously this isn't going to store all of it because we don't actually have enough in our system yet. But now it's almost like a direct pass through into here and not actually showing up in the grid, even though obviously it's still working. It's just filling up the hopper at the moment. Now, what you can do if you wanted was completely remove these blocks and actually just use these as a sort of stock check. Now you have to hold shift and left click to remove items just like that. Now, when you do actually do a left click like that, it takes your items and and puts it back directly into the system there they haven't just been deleted so we uh, as i say you could use this as a stock check say you had multiple of these in a row and you wanted to have them all labeled so say this one's all different blocks you wanted to have direct access to say sand dirt gravel and you could just wanted to stack at a time you could do something like this and you could just take it out quickly uh, like this you can also put things into your inventory like this of course just shift right click but of course that's going to be very very slow as well so you probably just use the grid moving on to something a little bit more more advanced now we have construction and deconstruction sort of panels now the constructor is made using a cable improvised processor construction core loads of these quartz and rich iron and some redstone dust now in our system here we have got some polished andesite now what we can do is take our polished andesite we'll just take some here and we can actually set filters inside of these constructors at the moment you can see the rule facing towards this stack of air blocks if i place a polished andesite in here it's instantly going to place it down and now we can do this with every single point of course so that's that that's placed it down so you'd probably use this most likely say in a tree farm where you want to place down saplings but then you also have the deconstructor which we have on the side here now on the deconstructor we have a completely separate system that is completely empty as of right now 
what I can do is as soon as I power this up, it's going to start breaking all these blocks, except from the top one, because I've set it to be different. So there we go. These are all going to be breaking things now. Ah, I think it is breaking. It's just that it's not exactly showing anything there. There you go. A little bit of a visual bug. So there we go. That's broken, and now we have all these items into the system. It's a bit of a crude way of changing things between systems, but uh, it is something that you can do. However, there are other things you can do as well. The constructor can not only just place blocks, it can also drop them directly into the world. So if you wanted to have some sort of weird farm, say, using Batania, where you wanted to drop food onto a Gormelius to make mana, you could say drop and have this as a piece of steak, and it will drop it down, but not directly. However, if I place this down, it's going to start throwing it out of course it's a little bit random in where it actually drops unfortunately it's not always the exact same alignment which is pretty cool as well as that of course though we have other things we can control this with redstone we can actually get this to place fluids as well if you so wish so if you say I had a piece of water that's constantly being sucked up then you could obviously place down water and then again you have exact mode and a place for other upgrades similarly with the deconstructor here you can also do filters but as well you can choose it to blacklist or whitelist so if you wanted to only um you wanted to only break polished andesite but inside of here we had this constantly placing say so obviously if we had this placed like this so the top two are now doing this white concrete and the bottom is doing polished andesite because these top two are blacklisted to polished andesite it's obviously not going to work because it's not whitelisted of course if we had it as blacklist however it would not break um polished andesite and only break the white so if i change these ones down here to uh blacklist polished andesite it would actually stop breaking it entirely now the other thing the constructor can do of course is actually pick things up so you could obviously have a constructor throw things down and then a deconstructor to pick things up another way of doing some basic transfer again we have upgrades but we'll show that later on now the last thing we have is external storage this is made using a deconstruction a construction core an improved processor some enriched iron some chests and a cable and you only get one of these per craft so we all know that with the basic storage system we have here we've got an, uh, an item here it's got 300 32 different items inside this disc and we can see them in here it's a bunch of random stuff now what we know from the previous episode is that you can set disk drives to have a priority so for now let's set this to be a priority of say 60 no rhyme or reason but we just want this to be lower than zero what we can then do is take our external storage and just stop placing them down we place one at a time we can see that there's now more items in here we can have iron raw gold raw iron and diamonds as that's what we have inside the system so if we put this on all the others we can see we have a lot more stuff now now i have got these chests set up in various ways people often do in vanilla of course so let's take these grass blocks here and use these as an example so all of these right now are in priority zero and we have the disk drive as priority 70 because these are a higher priority than the disk drive these grass blocks are going to go into one of these chests but there is no specific way obviously in here it just looks like it's gone in and out of the system which is great but they could be in any one of these chests which in this case seems to be that one there now it doesn't necessarily always have to go back into the same one but sometimes it does but it can chop and change so if you wanted to have things to be sorted out in the correct areas obviously grass blocks doesn't really go into any of these but i would say grass blocks go into here this is where you would use a couple of different things if you are only piping in one type of thing at a time what you could do is just say right the only thing coming out of whatever mine over there is grass blocks we could simply just have this as a higher priority of one and then when we place this in here it's always going to choose this one first until the chest is filled up it's because that has got the highest priority and that can go for any other thing however you would probably want to filter these a little bit better so it's the exact same as disk drives there the higher priority that chest is going to be filled up first what we are probably going to want to do is to actually set blacklists and whitelists so we want to whitelist our grass blocks to go into here meaning the only grass blocks can now go into here but that also means none of these other blocks can go into here but we're not filtering that right now but at the same time we're going to want to use blacklist and all these other things so we do not want grass to go into these things whatsoever we want to absolutely make sure that grass blocks don't go into the rest of these so these are all priority zero but now when we place a glass block in here it's not gone into the other chests because obviously it's blacklisted and it's only whitelisted to go into these awful annoying blocks and that's the basics of this as well as other things you can see that a do normal double chest can hold 3.4 thousand items and obviously the more full it is the more 
more it's going to show a percentage on the side. As well as that, this can be controlled with redstone signals, of course. You can actually filter for fluids. Obviously, chests cannot hold fluids, but if you had some sort of tank, say a mechanism tank, you could obviously use that as a uh, filter there if you wanted to. Uh, whitelist, we've already shown. Exact mode, again, that's to do with NPD data. Maybe you wanted to have one of these to only store any picks that are under 50% durability. You could probably do that. Now, the last thing is insert and extract types. So the accessive type, by default, it's insert and extract which is great but note from the previous episode we discussed this as well if you have it on insert only everything inside of here will not be seen in our system because we cannot take it out so if you do see that one of your chests isn't showing up in here see if the excess type has been changed extract only means that obviously we can't put things into this chest so we take out these chests and we put the chests back in it's probably going to go somewhere else no it actually has gone in here ah but that's because it doesn't usually go in that one but that is everything when it comes to external storage. Now, I personally use this with the mod storage drawers because you can has obviously filter those to hold one type of item. But that is going to be a whole different tutorial. And there are many of those tutorials online if you wish to see that now. The last things we need to show are the rest of the upgrades, of course. The first upgrade is going to be the speed upgrade, of course, needing our regular upgrade base plates with some enriched iron and some sugar. Now, speed upgrades do exactly what they say to the tin. They speed things up, of course. They can be used in pretty much any items over here but if we just do it inside of our interface because that's probably full by now which it is we can put a speed upgrade in here and it's going to start taking it away just a little bit faster now you can just have more than one you can go up to four and if you can, as you can see that is now going to be a heck of a lot faster it seems that our little system here is actually even faster than the full speed up interface can actually handle now there is sort of an upgrade to the speed upgrade and that's the stack upgrade using four speed upgrades and even more sugar we get the stack upgrade and if we go back to our interface here we can upgrade this one step further remove one of our speed upgrades and put a stack upgrade in here and as you can see it's taking a whole stack out at a time the stack upgrade can also be put into the constructor so if we have the constructor in here and have a stack upgrade and they change it to throwing things we can actually drop a whole stack of items at a time if it was actually in the system as you see here the stack upgrade cannot be put into the deconstructor however so you can't pick up things a stack at a time unfortunately the last upgrade however is the crafting upgrade again using a base plate two crafting tables a construction core and enriched iron the crafting upgrade can be put inside of a interface or an extract port or extractor and then your system if auto crafting is set up will automatically try and make those in your system again coming back to this where you could have this as sort of a internal buffer or storage you could have a crafting cord card and then say you wanted to have furnaces in here if you had no furnaces in the system but you had the crafting set up you'd be able to have a stack of furnaces or one furnace or how many furnaces you wanted at any time in these spaces however we have not shown you how to do auto crafting as of yet which is what is we are going to show off in the next tutorial if this video helped you out in any way shape or form then please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe that would really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when the auto crafting video goes live but if you have not seen the basics on how to get started with refined storage and all of this was just a little bit confusing for you then i highly recommend you check out the video on screen now to learn how to get your first refined storage system up and running but until next time guys take care